to your name. We'll sing the song of your mighty greatness. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. We'll shout for joy to the only name that saves. We've come to celebrate.
something I don't deserve. You're beautiful, love of my God. You are the unchanging love, my God. Your heart sends hope from above. The great Creator, beautiful Savior, I've been redeemed. There is life now from your victory.
kids come on up front, please, if you would? Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Pretty good? Kind of quiet today? So, are there anything that you guys are thankful for? Can you think of anything you're thankful for? What's something you're thankful for? God. What else are we thankful for? Sometimes it's hard to think about things that we're thankful for, isn't it? Gabe's thankful for new socks. Yes, I heard you. <laughs> so in the Bible, in Psalm, it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, he just listed a whole bunch of things we can be thankful for, right? God heals us. He forgives us. He saves us from death. He crowns us. He fills our life with good things. So we can be thankful that we've got a church to come to today. We can be thankful for the band that plays the music for us for our parents who brought us here, that we've got cars that bring us here, that we've got a beautiful day outside again today. There's just all kinds of things we can be thankful for, huh? That we've got clothes that we can wear to church. So this week, I want you guys to start thinking about all of the things that we can be thankful for God, to God about, okay? So we're going to be thankful this week for everything we've got, okay? Okay, you guys can walk to Kids Zone. And you can tell Miss Barb, thank you for having Kids Zone. So tonight we've got teen quizzing at 4.30, and we've got some of our former quizzers coming back to help us out tonight. Um, kids quizzing at 5 o'clock and youth group at 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, our food is covered for tonight, so thank you guys for your faithfulness with that all the time. Uh, next Saturday, our... Teen quizzers are having their going to their first national tournament, um, so they're really excited about that, and I think we'll have a really good time there. Um, end of October the 30th, we're doing our all church youth group, so put it on your calendars. We've got a lot of exciting things for that night, um, and then the 31st is our fall festival from 4:30 to 7. So come on out, help us, bring candy, bring lots of candy. Um, you can never have too much candy. So thank you. Oh, and then on the 30th, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on the 30th and the 31st. So the 30th, we also have um, a potluck after church. For pastor appreciation. <laughs> they... They told me in the last board meeting that it was pastor depreciation. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, how is everybody? Good. Thank you, sir. Yeah, if you, if you would be willing to donate candy, we would appreciate it. And you can bring it before then, too. Um... Just don't give it to Gabe. Give it to me. <laughs> I got a big truck I can put it in the back of. No. Um, we, uh, we do have a lot of stuff going on. And we're actually going to uh, I'm gonna make a, a, a sheet that we'll start posting on Facebook with all the announcements so we can keep up with them online. Um, and then we'll just keep updating that sheet that we'll post um, to make it a little bit easier. Anybody have anything exciting going on this week? Senior night. <laughs> Boom. Three senior nights. Too many seniors. Wow. 
That's crazy. Brennan, Brennan rocked the, the football the football game. Excellent. Great job. How how was uh, how was volley, volleyball? Right, you play volleyball. How you doing? I saw your picture on the Ford Chronicle. Uh, I know I missed the tape, but awesome. Oh man. Well, I mean it happens. You don't have tape on right now, so excellent. Great. Cool. And we do have our college students back for a minute, so yay, you're, you, we're not going to let you go again. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here today. Uh, so about five years ago, I, t- <laughs> I took an EMT class at, at Danville Area Community College and the class was put on by the OSF organization. Um, it was a semester course, and uh, it, it took a while. Um, I was in the process of, of getting a divorce and, and really trying to figure out what the, what the heck my next step in life was going to be. And uh, it, was, it may come as a surprise to some of you that I'm not always really serious. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I get work done, right? Um, but I was the same way in this class, and then I, was, I was actually probably the biggest distraction in the class. Um, I, I like to joke a lot because it kind of helped my, uh, my ADD cope with the seriousness of it. So I, I joked, I had fun, we had fun in the class, and most of the time it wasn't a problem. However, there was one day that uh, it kind of caught me off guard, and it kind of changed the environment for me just a little bit. While I was, while I was goofing off one of the days, the, the teacher stopped and yelled at me. He didn't yell directly at me. But everybody knew it was for me. I was basically told to focus and make sure I was taking it seriously. And, and I was. I actually ended up as the valedictorian of the class with the best score in the class. So forget him. Uh, <laughs> that didn't really change, though, the impact of, of, of that moment and the, the shift that it made me kind of take. And I probably needed, honestly. And, and I, and I, and I will say, it wasn't Les Meninga, but he may or may not have been in the room. Uh, anybody ever have a moment like that, though? A moment where you're, you're being silly and you're not really thinking it's a problem, and then, bam. You're forced to focus. An experience like that kind of kind of snaps you out of the fog you're in, and for a second you're like, well, am I doing everything wrong now? So you, you, you start to dig a little bit deeper when that happens. So I'm not sure if you've noticed or not, but there's been a theme over the last year of the sermons. The primary theme has been growth. Uh, growth in our, in our lives together growth in our, our prayer life, growth in our time with uh, God's Word, overall improvement in our spiritual walk, self, self-improvement. But today, we're going to begin the last regular sermon series of 2022. Yeah, <laughs> Gabe's clapping. He's like, yeah, it's over. It's not over. It's only just begun, my friend. This, the series should walk us through November 13th, and then on November 20th, I've got um, some college students from Olivet coming down, and they're going to do music and preaching on the 20th of November, so that's exciting. We're looking forward to that. But then on November 27th, guess what that is? That is the first Sunday of Advent. It is here already. So I kind of want to end this year walking into the holiday season with the concept of, of focus. It's a word and an idea that we hear places that that aren't just school and work. And sometimes it's something that God desires from us 
every single day. However, here, here's the truth we should all recognize. The world around us loves to be a thief when it comes to our focus. Would you agree with that? I think that's true. It's way too easy to scroll for hours on end through our favorite social media platform. And before you know it, you're, you're late to a meeting or you're far behind in whatever you, work you were doing. And it, it might even cause you to take a little bit longer to prepare for your sermon about focus. You can be so focused on, on someone else's negativity You ever get drawn into, you see people arguing on Facebook, and then next thing you know, you're like, now you're mad at them, right? (laughs) But you can be be so focused on on even your past and that you miss what God's doing in your present. Or you can be so focused on somebody else's life that you're you're missing what God's doing in your life and what He's leading you to in your future. Our focus has the potential to influence, influence our faith. Over the next few weeks, we're going we're gonna to allow God to influence our focus in, in, in positive ways and in a few different ways. It may require some rewiring, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. So as we kick things off, Turn to Philippians 4.8. It'll be on the screen too if you don't have your Bible, but if you want to, if you like the pages, turn to Philippians 4.8. This is our main verse. Um, We're going to be kind of camping out in it today, and we're going to talk about some other stuff too. But in this verse, just, just for some context, Paul is writing about the importance of what we think about. The thoughts that come in and out of our minds day to day. If you'll allow him, I believe God desires to to show us how we can focus on the good, which is the title of the sermon today, which is Focus on the Good. So in Philippians 4.8, here's what Paul says. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable... If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Paul mentions a, a, a few different words in this single verse when, when he's telling us about it. And all of these things could be defined as good, right? However, knowing what good thoughts are is one thing, I think, but Putting them in our brain or choosing to focus on them is another thing. So how do we do this consistently? There's a three-step process that I think we can can follow that kind of helps us to think the way Paul asks us to. And the first step is simply to recognize the wrong. Sometimes it's easier said than done. So when you're young, our, our parents have to kind of continually show us the, the difference between right and wrong until we get it. There's some basic functions that we're born with. The psychology stays there and we kind of know about it, but there's some stuff that, that we really need to learn from our parents about right and wrong, especially when we start to verbalize stuff. And I know my ADD, with my ADD, it took my parents uh, probably a couple extra nose flicks to get me to go where I needed to go, Right? So they didn't really flick me in the nose. I was just kidding. So some of y'all have to work just a little bit harder than some others, so I'm sorry to my mother. Um, but oftentimes, we're, we're, when we're thinking, we're subconsciously having a dialogue with ourselves and our minds. So naturally, many of our thoughts revolve around us, me, some good, some bad. If we, if we know how to point out something that's wrong in the world around us or in the conversations that we're involved in, we also have to practice that same thing with ourselves. 
So if we want to see our, our negative thoughts emptied out of our minds, then, then we have to be willing to focus on them when they come into our heads. So we've got to catch them. And the Bible gives us categories, even, even this one verse in Philippians that show us what a positive thought looks like. The, the way we recognize the negative thoughts includes filtering them out through these, these categories. So it's something that we can kind of stack our thinking up against to see what direction we're headed. So Ephesians 4.29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. I don't think we always think about who's listening. When we're having a conversation, we're either focused on here or maybe the person right in front of us, but we don't always think about who even across the room might be zeroing in on what we're saying. Carrie heard Gabe talking about socks. I believe God's desire is not to just use words to encourage others but also to encourage us and the truth is we we all naturally place our focus on things that distract us right so this is why social media has the the potential to be such a large distraction for us because it it gives us a sense of of peace sometimes from what we may be facing in our own lives in the real world so for a lot of us it makes us feel anxious and negative too because we do get wrapped up in the, the stress of other people's business. But the reason we're addicted to it is because we're often searching for a sense of validation, for that, for that high that we get from new likes and, and new comments. So if, you, if you've been searching for a, a sense of peace lately, and I think a lot of us are, the root issue may very well begin with what is coming in and what's going out of our mouths and our minds. So, if you want to get your peace back, maybe it has to start with recognizing what has stolen it in the first place. So, once you've recognized the negative thoughts, you have to follow into the second step, which is redis rediscover the replacement so there's countless times in Scripture when we, we get the sense that Jesus doesn't just desire to take some things away from us to make us better, like sins or struggles in our lives, but He intends to put something better in its place. The same is true when it comes to our thought process. God's desire is not for us to to be weighed down by our negative or our unhealthy thoughts. Instead, he wants us to, to meditate on the positive things that were mentioned by Paul even in Philippians 4.8. So how do we do this? The writer of Psalm 1 kind of lays it out pretty clear for us in verse 2. He says, Delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Law of the Lord is often interpreted strictly as the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, but I honestly think it's, it, this verse applies to all of Scripture, every piece of it. The good things Paul lists in, in Philippians only come through by knowing the Word of God. There's so many incredible stories and teachings in this, in this book specifically, that, that will influence the way that we think day in and day out. So whatever we immerse ourselves in the most will eventually come out of us, right? So that's kind of why I, I believe that meditation leads to transformation. If we're meditating, we're taking things captive. We're separating ourselves and slowing ourselves down. And Paul actually talks about this concept somewhere else in the New Testament. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
the replacement that God wants to make for your negative thoughts is positive ones. However, the, the deciding factor in the equation is time spent meditating on God's Word, allowing Him to transform you day by day. The Holy Spirit has to work in your heart and transform you. Some of the ways that I'm able to kind of keep doing this every day is by matching up a task that maybe I'm not real excited about with something that I'm going to have to do anyway. So like I'll listen to the Bible while I'm doing something else. So I'll listen to somebody reading the Bible maybe while I'm working out or I'm fixing dinner, uh, which is usually just mac and cheese in the microwave. Uh, Or maybe right when I wake up in the few minutes before Clayton attacks me, Um, I might open my Bible app and read through a teaching there. They've got, not only can you read just through the Bible in the Bible app, but they've got reading plans and everything else there for you. Great devotionals. Um, It's a good way to start your day. If you feel like you don't have time to crack open the Bible and sit down and bury yourself in it, get the Bible app and just scroll through it. It's got some amazing stuff in there that will help you in the beginning of the day. So, But the more I do this, I start to notice that not only were the activities I was doing more enjoyable because I tell you, I hate working out. Lifting heavy stuff is the worst on purpose. Um, But I start to find those things a little bit more enjoyable. And then my entire day becomes more enjoyable because I've started it out properly. So once I discovered knowing God's Word was the key to finding the good thoughts that Paul wants us to to talk, to to think, I I was willing to do what it took to get those things in my mind, whatever it takes. So that's, that's not the end of the process, though. So we as humans have a, we have a tendency to get comfortable and complacent in our progress and eventually take steps backwards. And this leads us to the final step in the process, which was accumulate accountability. We are scared of that word accountability. If there's one thing I know about the body of Christ, it's that we are not to live our lives by ourselves. God's gifted us with brothers and sisters, which Paul talks about in Philippians, to hold us accountable in areas that we are seeking to grow in. How do we go about entering into accountability relationships with someone close to us? So, sometimes they just happen. So, when I was a teenager, early teenager, probably 13, I, I've talked about this before briefly, that I started going to concerts of my favorite band, which was Jeff Moore in the Distance back then. And I got to know the band more and more over the years due to the, due to the amount of concerts that I went to, and they were finally like, okay, we'll talk to him. Eventually, in 1998, rolled around, and they, they went their separate ways. The band split up. And I maintained the friendships with them over the years through email and then MySpace. Y'all remember MySpace? Um, and then I started working with some of them in Nashville, and then now I talk to them on Facebook and through texting, and, and we, keep, we keep contact. And one of the friendships I appreciate the most was uh, with the drummer. His name was Chuck Connor. Chuck left the music industry right after that. And he started working with his dad, who, who was also named Chuck. Uh, he looked like a giant Santa. Um, and the organization was called Christian Missions Unlimited. And they, they build churches in Brazil. They do mission trips. And they build, they've built hundreds of churches in Brazil over the years. What I couldn't figure out for the longest time, though, but I kept going with it because it was my favorite band. But why the heck these guys would want to maintain a friendship with a kid over all these years. And the truth is, we were, we were friends for a lot of reasons. But there was one reason in particular that stood out to me as we got older and remained friends. And it was because Chuck Connor genuinely wanted to see me grow. He invested in me, and he wanted to see me improve. We talked about drums, we talked about God, we talked about girls. I was a teenager at that time. In fact, in some cases, I think some of these situations lead us to people 
that don't necessarily want to see us grow. We can get into the wrong situations too with people, so we have to be able to discern who we're allowing to be our accountability partner. And not only do some people not want to see us grow, but sometimes they'll hold us back too. Entering into accountability requires honesty from both parts. And the reality of accountability is that you may not like what you hear sometimes. I have had to have some, some hard talks in my life, like the teacher at the EMT class. However, once you hear it, if, if you're adult about it, you can start working to change it. So in terms of emptying out the negative thoughts from our minds, people close to you will be able to, to kind of see what's in your head by what flows out of your mouth. Even your body language, language will sometimes show what you're thinking about. So if we're willing, those close to us can, can act as accountability for us. One of the greatest uh, relational situations you can find yourself in is one where someone else is regularly checking in on you and asking you how much time you're spending in God's Word, how your prayer life's going, if you've been to church lately, how boring is your pastor? This challenge you to kind of take steps of growth by forcing you to focus on the things that Jesus wants, to, wants us to think about and wants us to be aware of. Forces us to focus on our relationship with Jesus, our relationship with the church, and how that all affects us and everybody around us. So, Focusing on the good things Paul speaks about requires a deep dive into the Bible. You'll start to see some pretty amazing things that God desires for you when you allow Him to transform you step by step. You first have to recognize the wrong, the negative thoughts coming in and out. And once you do, you can start to allow God to replace them with something better. And then from there, accountability is the key to, to maintaining any form of transformation. We have to have accountability. Because some people stop. They're like, oh, I've changed. Great. We have to be accountable to that change, and we have to maintain it. So this coming week, schedule a regular time to read the Bible. Every day if you can. Along with reading, I want you to Take some time to journal. I asked you to do this at the beginning of the year, if you remember. Journal your gratitude and maybe your negative thoughts, too. And compare them and see how it changes and grows the more you read the Word, the more you focus on it. If you're intentional, you can do something about it. This could be thoughts about work. could be thoughts about your significant other. Don't let maybe maybe nice thoughts about your significant other. Your friends, your kids, God, the list could go on and on. Whatever you think about, maybe write it down. And finally, commit to meeting with a close this is what some of us have a lot of a lot of struggles with. Commit to meeting with a close friend or a mentor to discuss what you're reading or learning. Could be anybody. Call me if you want. Pray with them. Ask them to help you identify any negative spots in your life. Because sometimes we don't see it. John Wesley identifies sin as an involuntary transgression against a known law of God. So something that we're doing that we know is against what God is doing. 
I said that wrong, a voluntary transgression against the known law of God. But there's a second part, which is an involuntary transgression, which are things that we don't know that we're doing wrong. And there's a lot of stuff that we do every day that we don't know we're doing wrong, and somebody else can point that out for us. So my, my challenge for you is get in the Word and find somebody to walk through that journey with you. And as I said in the beginning, this may require some rewiring, but I think it's going to be totally worth it in the end. So we'll talk about it a little bit more next week. We're going to pray. I want us to pray specifically for Wayne this morning. Wayne took a, a fall last night. Wayne broke his hip last night. And he's, I think he's got some other, some other pains too I haven't heard about yet, but Wayne broke his hip last night. So we're going to pray for Wayne, and we're going to pray for Charlotte. Charlotte got in a fight last week. <laughs> yeah, you should say, that was my next statement. You should see the other guy. No, Char, Charlotte took a fall at Hudson's last week, and uh, she's here. I called her yesterday, and she was sharp, and, and really, I thought she would be sore and not want, not want to talk to me, and we, we talked for about an hour on the phone. So we... Uh, I'm glad to see her here this morning, but pray for her as she continues to get the soreness shook out of her body and get the bruises healed and all that good stuff. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for, thank you for our thoughts and, and our ability to, to be aware of them. I pray that we can be more aware of them this week and that we can take them captive and that we can discern what you want us to replace the negative thoughts with. Because some of us, Lord, are buried in them and we don't know how to dig out of it. And I think the first step is to just find you in the midst of the noise. And the more we focus on you, the more we can walk out of the hole that we've put ourselves in or, or we just found ourselves in. Father, we love you so much and we thank you. We're thankful you're here. We're thankful that, that you've given us everything that you've given us. Lord, I want to pray for Wayne this morning and what he's dealing with. Pray that you will heal him. Help the doctors and the nurses establish the, the best plan of treatment for him moving forward, for his caretakers, for those that need to be with him, and, and just pray that you'll comfort him through the Holy Spirit, but also through those around him. And Lord, we pray for Charlotte this morning. We thank you for taking care of her through that situation. But we also pray that you'll continue to walk with her as she, she heals from some of the soreness that's left behind. We love Charlotte, Lord, and we thank you for her being a part of this family. We're so grateful for her, Lord. And Lord, I want to pray for the other people that couldn't be here this morning or just aren't here this morning. And I want to pray for those that aren't here yet that you plan to bring to us, Lord. I pray that not only are they prepared to come here and learn from you, but Lord, I want to pray that we're prepared for them no matter what they look like and no matter what they are in their lives, Lord. I pray that we're prepared to open them, welcome them with open arms. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, know oh, his love.
was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Yes, I am who you see.